Okay, uh, I'll share my. Uh, I'll start to like. Uh, I, I'll start my presentation then. It's 11:30. Yes. I hope uh, everyone is doing well. Okay. So hello everyone. Welcome to my presentation on uh, data and AI solution architecture best practices. Uh, it's it's a big topic uh, because uh, in in general I will talk about like what are the things that are available in Azure platform regarding data and AI. So. Uh, when we talk about data and AI, it's uh, sometimes we just talk about uh, how to store the data or what kind of like POCs we can do with the uh, data, kind of like AI solution or AI application. But uh, if we talk about the solution architecture, which is uh, uh, which falls under the full enterprise uh, category uh, for an organization who has SaaS or any kind of like a system uh, like that is uh, running in, in the market, if they want to like add uh, AI facilities at uh, data driven decision making or AI powered uh, decision making uh, things they need to do uh, we will try to like cover in this topic so uh, and it starts from data ingestion to data storing to doing all those like uh, data related activities and then uh, uh, getting uh, the value from the data using AI AI based uh, algorithms or uh, pre-trained models or custom AI models all those all of them so from a platform point of view or app architecture point of view, things we need to consider, uh, things uh, we can uh, use from Azure, how to build it, uh, we will talk about uh, in this uh, uh, talk today. Okay, uh, before we jump in into the details, we'll just like give a, like a very high level agenda. So uh, we'll talk about enterprise data and AI strategy, end-to-end uh, -end data and AI platform, how does it look like? Uh, how data and AI lifecycle looks like because when we are designing a solution architecture, we need to know how the lifecycle is because we will have to our architecture needs to adapt with the lifecycle. It cannot uh, be separate or isolated from the lifecycle. Uh, what are the per personas or like a job roles or people that are involved in this uh, lifecycle uh, who will use this uh, architecture and uh, the in an ideal world things uh, you need to consider regarding data and AI components and uh, things Azure is offering from data and AI point of view. So we will uh, try to cover all those things and uh, I know the time is only one hour to one and a half hours. So we'll try to give as much information as we can. If you guys have any question, feel free to stop me and ask me. It's always better to ask uh, right away. And at the end, we will have uh, like more conversation regarding Q&A and best practices and everything. <clears throat> OK, uh, before uh, we get in details, I would like to just uh, talk uh, maybe uh, like a, a bit about uh, who I am and what am I doing uh, these days. So uh, my name is Rahat Yasir. I work uh, at uh, Isaac Instruments um, as the director of data science and AI. And in the past, it's been like 10, 12 years. I've, uh, I was involved in a lot of companies uh, uh, and mostly uh, regarding data and AI projects or applications. Uh, my background is uh, uh, like computer science and then AI and all doing all those things. And I'm also a Microsoft MVP. Uh, Microsoft MVP in uh, AI category from last seven years. So yeah, that's a, like a very high level overview of my journey. So before we jump in into the uh, data and AI uh, like solution designing, so things I just want to like give a like a high level information where the market is going. We know about all those like uh, statistics that uh, the data and AI market is growing a lot and it will continue to grow. And those stats that we see uh, in this on the screen, so those are from uh, 26, 16, 2020. But you can see the growth of the data and AI market from 2016 to 2025 is 1.4 to 60 billion dollars and it's it's growing more and more every day and because of covid we all thought uh, that the market is uh, will be getting impacted a lot but the data and ai market is not that much impacted where uh, data and ai market got more investment uh, during this covid time because we are realizing that uh, the value of all those automation the value of all the uh, bringing data and ai related features prediction forecasting those things so before we jump into the uh, like solution designing, how the data and AI solution will be, we need to know uh, like why we need this data and AI architecture solution or how the data and AI platform strategy works. So you need to know a bit uh, in details from an enterprise point of view. So 
the data in AI is not just about like storing the data and then just uh, having some AI related POCs. Uh, for an enterprise to make money from data in AI, you need to think a bit more detail where uh, you will actually uh, like think about how the data uh, like store will be, how the knowledge side will be, how the information context will be. So there are like three different bubbles here. And when you combine those three bubbles together, you will actually be able to like design AI and data centric planning uh, as a form of strategy for your organization. So you need to think about how you're storing the data. You need to have data lake for uh, like structured, unstructured data, both types. You need to have uh, data ingestion strategies. You need to have cold and hot storage, how you will archive your data. You need to know how you will process the data. This is just on the data side. For the knowledge and skill side, you need to have data science team and just not uh, artificial intelligence. You need to have proper dashboard, visualization, uh, BI related analytics for the knowledge and skill side. And also both when you connect the knowledge and skill and the data, you get the uh, information context, which is you need to have a data and AI platform that will help you to store the data and also that will enable or empower all of, all of your knowledge and skills. You need to have your information management. You need to have information architecture and also you need to set the data flow. It needs to have a proper lineage that the data moves properly without having any bottleneck or issue. So when you have all those three different uh, bubbles, combined together, you need to get the understanding of your data. You, need, you will be able to create the proper data lineage and data culture through different decision making and governance. You will be able to actually find out the return of in the, uh, return of investment of your uh, data and AI related, uh, related. and uh, you will be able to set the business driven priorities and that is actually a full strategic uh, movement regarding data and AI. So you cannot just think about one. You need to think about all three. You need to have the platform. You need to have the people. You also need to have the strategy. So for any organization, when we talk about data and AI, uh, how it works, uh, like do you expect like if you're in, uh, starting to if you hire just one or two people today and you will get the full uh, return? No. So to get to maximize the return of uh, return on investment, you need to follow this triangle. So the first step is uh, bringing the data. You need to collect the data. You need to uh, like keep one thing in your mind is uh, operational data or like uh, uh, application data and actual analytical data. So uh, when we, if you have a SaaS product, a SaaS software as a service, you have all those like SQL Server or Cosmos DB or different kind of like MongoDB related uh, uh, like databases. So those are your application database. Uh, you can, you will have to bring those data to your cloud uh, platform or data lake or uh, clean them and have it in the uh, data warehouse to actually use the data regarding data and AI uh, like uh, like uh, approaches. So the first thing is bringing that uh, data as raw, creating proper data drop zone, creating data lake, proper data warehouse and everything. This is the first thing. Don't expect to get a lot of return at this point. Then you need to understand what is the value of this data? You need to, you will be able to define the KPIs, uh, data inside, designing the platform and small POCs. That's where your data becomes information. From the information, you need to make your data into a knowledge, and that's when you need to apply data management, data governance, and uh, revenue generation. How can you have revenue from your data and AI? This knowledge will give you the idea, but again, at this point, don't expect to have revenue. Then when you have the knowledge, you will see you will do a lot of like small POC, small uh, things, but again, you will also fail a lot. So as it is a part of R&D, you, uh, you are trying a lot of things. You are also failing a lot of things. So you need to reiterate based on the learning ROI and the experience, which will give you the understanding. And the last thing after learning from those uh, knowledge and understanding, you get into insight, which is applying the learning and understanding to give you the prescriptive uh, approach of making uh, like proper revenue from your data and AI. So this is how the triangle works. So uh, you need to think about like a long term investment with the uh, iterative approach so that uh, you get proper return. One of the things we always try in the data and AI domain, which is 70 20 10 uh, rule. So it's it's a common rule in the innovation domain, actually. So when you are investing in data and AI, you don't know how much uh, money you will invest and in, how much money you will uh, re get returned. So you need to uh, choose 
the to, like first 70 percent as the absolute necessary part like taking care of the data having dashboard having analytics which will give you which is absolutely necessary then the 20 percent is the sure shot and the 10 percent is that kind of like image processing video analytics big r d regarding investment so that even if something happened with the 10 percent uh, r d you have always your 90 percent investment and its return so that's we how we set up the uh, like strategy okay so we know like what kind of like strategy we need to set. You know, we know like how the data and AI uh, investment works. Uh, first data and then all the information, knowledge, understanding and the insight. So it is actually an ecosystem end to end. It's not just like doing certain uh, P, like MVP or a POC. You need to do complete the AI loop. So to complete this loop of data and AI, you need to have some components. So one side is the left side is the data components. The middle side is the AI components and the right side is the platform components. So which works uh, for both data and AI. So and we will need them to design the solution architecture. So the, on the data components, we need to have the architecture that we design. We need to have proper data ingestion process. We need to have proper data storing uh, process, data transformation because we need to like uh, transform the raw data into uh, gold standard as uh, something in between uh, like a uh, bronze standard that kind. We need to do data reporting, visualization. We need to have something for data consumption where after processing all the data, we need to expose the data for other systems to consume. We need to have data uh, metadata management process. We also need to have data exploration and data de democratization. As we are uh, having the data, we need to expose the data that this data has value or not. This data can uh, be used or not. This data is actually uh, uh, has any value like your data analyst business developer needs to like uh, check the data, review the data, analyze the data and uh, at the same time, we need to have data operations, automation, data quality check. So data ops is a new uh, term these days, which is kind of like uh, like having proper data flow or data lineage. So uh, this data flow will uh, ensure that there is no bottleneck. So these components you need to consider to design the solution architecture for the data side. Then you have the AI side. So the the solution architecture that you choose for your organization that uh, like system uh, or the cloud provider should give you some predefined AI models. So it's not like always you need to have a lot of data, train your model, uh, host it, uh, do all the ML ops and everything. Uh, for certain uh, common use cases, there will be a situation where you cannot find the data or you cannot collect the data. So if the uh, this Cloud platform already provides those predefined AI models. That is great because you can use them while you build your custom systems. You also need to have that custom AI modeling facilities. You need to have uh, AI model hosting option because you need to design the production. You need to put the AI model in the production uh, uh, like and connect it with the existing client application, which is web and mobile. You need to have AI model monitoring approach that uh, OK, the model that you put it in production works well or not. You need to have model retraining process. If the model is uh, there is data drift, if the model is performing bad, you can retrain it. You need to have AI computation. So as a data scientist on AI engineer, I am writing code in my laptop. But again, when I'm trying to run the AI training, I need big GPU machines. So if you write the code in your laptop and just push the training uh, in the uh, AI computation or cloud computation with all the GPUs, you're not uh, spending money to buy the GPU. You're just spending money uh, to use those GPU. That is always ideal. You also have needs to have the option for AI batch use cases where uh, after doing the training uh, or like uh, the putting the model in production, you have a, like a batch ap approach where you can do all the model uh, like inferencing in a batch. So and uh, it needs to as a lot of times your model needs to serve in real time as well. And then we also hear this topic, this as uh, individual uh, like uh, word ML ops a lot these days. So machine learning operations. So what it does is taking those model in the production, designing this monitoring, computation, all those retraining pipelines. That is the task of the MLOps. So you need to have uh, an MLOps is not a tool. 
it is kind of like a lineage uh, that can uh, like that can you can achieve using all the tools and pipelines and also you need to have automation or RPA. This is the uh, like AI side and the platform components that you need, cons you need to consider to design the architecture is you need to have proper data governance and management who has access to the data uh, like uh, where the data is, how the data is moving from one region to another region and this is important because of all the ER99 GDPR that kind of policy. A lot of times if you're uh, working at a, like a big organization, you uh, it's hard to just focus on one cloud. There will be situation where you can have multi cloud, so you need to consider that kind of like Google uh, as your AWS that kind of multi cloud uh, like uh, approaches. So there is a, like a new term these days, which is data mesh. You can take a look at that one. So but again, you need to be careful because a lot of people also call data mesh as data mess. So how you, you, you your system is going to add up is going to communicate and also you need to consider the cost as well. You need to have business driven ROI. You, you should not do the AI and think how you're going to sell it. You need to ask the business. Hey, is there any value of this uh, AI approach and then do it so that the uh, return on inv investment is always uh, business driven. You need to have ensure data security, ethics, bias uh, as a governance. You need to have data driven decision making with different kind of like visualization and uh, uh, analytics. And you need to have proper short term, long term, mid term strategy. You cannot expect to achieve everything in a one uh, quarter. It's a, like a three to four quarter approach. You need you achieve them one by one by one. So it starts from data ingestion and ends in data and AI full strategic achievement. So this is uh, what uh, we uh, look for like in an enterprise point of view when we design solution architecture for data and AI, having all the components that uh, to serve uh, your organization. Now, if we go into details, so what we see for the data, first one is the data platform. So the data platform you need to, uh, what are the things you need to have and one of the things uh, Azure is offering. So. If we, as we say that we will also look at the uh, life cycle or, or the key personas as well. So the life cycle that we see is the first one is data related life cycle. So there are like a six uh, roles or like segments in data related life cycle. One is uh, and also on the right side, there are like six uh, classes or classifications or uh, like uh, approaches. First one is uh, your business leadership will take the decision of setting the goals. Then the second one is uh, the data architect will, uh, based on the goal, review and create the data ingestion architecture, how the data will be ingested, how the data will be stored, how the data will move from one uh, one side to another side, how the data will be consumed for other uh, approaches. So data architect will uh, make sure all those things with the proper architecture. Then the data engineer is the one who will write the data ingestion uh, pipeline to bring the data with different triggers, with different schedulers. Then the data modeler a lot of times is the one who because the data you initially ingest could be structured data, unstructured data, raw data, could be anything. You are just like dumping the data in the uh, data lake. Then the data modeler is the one uh, is uh, loading the data, doing all the data processing and uh, creating different kind of like schema data. It could be star schema and then putting it into a data warehouse so that you can have beautiful reporting uh, or like uh, Power BI or that kind of like uh, analytical reporting. So data modeler is the one who does all those like data modeling, data reporting and visualization where he also works with the data visualization or reporting person. And then the last one is data analyst and data scientist who starts to work the moment the data is available and works till uh, the end to ensure the data is uh, like good, there are proper KPIs, identify the data inside and everything. So that's how the data lifecycle works from setting up the goals to designing the architecture, ingesting the data, doing the data modeling, exposing the data as a report or visualization, and then analyzing the data. This is the side of the uh, data uh, ingestion lifecycle with all the key personas that will be involved in this approach. Now, uh, what are the components that you uh, have? OK, someone uh, raised uh, his hand. Uh, if you have any question, you can ask me um, or I will just like uh, move uh, forward. Uh, is anyone any has any question? Yeah. Yes, I have a question. So is there any uh, role uh, a solution architect will play in this uh, life cycle? 
So uh, we need to know uh, what is this solution architecture uh, architect place. So solution architect is kind of like the sol like a, like looks at the full solution of the system of the application end to end where to store the application data, where to store the uh, like uh, uh, like host the application, everything. Solution architecture will play some role when uh, the AI model is ready, when you are ingesting, communicating that kind of like restful uh, like uh, uh, like uh, calls. API calls from your application to the AI. But again, here you are uh, ingesting the data for analytical purposes, for visualization, reporting, and for data scientists and that kind of approach. So there is no uh, like role for specific solution architect. But again, uh, the data architect could be someone who, who has solution architecture experience. So if uh, your solution architect can uh, la like knows how the data architecture works, knows in depth data and the cloud platform, he can also play this uh, second part. So uh, as uh, it is solely data architecture role, but a solution architect can play that role. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, sure. OK, thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's move forward. So the components. So for the data platform components, we have uh, like we can see seven different components that we need to consider to design the architecture. One is data ingestion, data storing, data transformation, reporting, visualization, data consumption, governance and exploration. So if we see it as a diagram, how does it look? So the first one is data ingestion. So you sometime you need to do data migration, like being bringing big chunk of data, terabytes of data to the cloud. So you need to consider uh, that kind of an approach. Sometime you need you are doing real time data streaming or data ingestion. Sometime you're doing pipeline or as a scheduler or data trigger based uh, or uh, even driven based trigger approach. So the ingestion pipeline or the tool that you choose that needs to have this kind of like uh, uh, facilities. Then uh, after designing the ingestion pattern, you need to store the data. So when you're storing the data, you need to consider you are storing structured data and structured data both. This data that you store as a structure unstructured, you uh, you need to archive them because after two or three or four years, there is no value of the data to keep them in the hot storage because it's expensive. You need to have proper cold storage storage or archiving mechanism or strategy. You need to have proper data storage zone. Now you can ask what is uh, data storage zone in the data lake? When we ingest the data, we put the data in the raw and we call it bronze zone or like normal or like a raw zone. And then we uh, like apply hard rules that the data needs to be a single table, data needs to be clean or all those like like hard rules or uh, add multiple tables, put it into a parquet file or in or any kind other kind of like file format that you use for your business. So you need to have the data uh, after applying the hard rule in the next next zone, uh, bronze zone. And then from the bronze zone, for different type of data from different business domain, you apply the business related rules and then you put the data in a, a gold zone or the final zone. So you need to have different kind of like zones so that the data is properly uh, like uh, converted into and cleaned. And then when you're, you're doing all those things, you need to ensure that data is properly secured and no one has access to the data. You also need to define data related KPIs. So a lot of times you see that uh, after doing this kind of like data transformation and having the full data, you are also using different kind of like reporting and you don't need to add, keep all the data at the same time. You sometimes we uh, do some kind of like a summary of the data uh, to keep the gist uh, of the full uh, snapshot so that the data is uh, exposed uh, for different kind of reporting. But again, for the reporting, you don't, need, you don't need the full data. You just need a subset of the data that has the full overview or sometime for different data uh, or AI approaches. We keep uh, a feature store where uh, like this kind of like a subset of the data is uh, is available for some kind of like machine learning based operation. Then once you have stored the data, you need to have uh, like data process. So the, on the data process side, you would need to have proper data reporting or visualization. Power BI could be a part of it. But you need to do the data transformation, which is uh, uh, like uh, working with the data storage zone. So as I said, raw transient curation, that kind of zone or raw bronze zone, gold zone, that kind, whatever you call. You need to do data wrangling 
to identify the data is screen, data is usable, data is no issue, there is no missing values, that kind. The data quality is good. You, you, you do that kind of checking here. Once you, the data is stored properly, you need to expose the data as a, for com, uh, like have proper computation to do that kind of like data cleaning or data processing. So you need to have data computation side. And also uh, all those like individual data changes they are doing, you need to have some kind of recipe that, OK, this is the raw data. You have uh, changed from raw to transient. You, you, de like, uh, you did this kind of operation to convert from raw to transient and this kind of operation to convert from transient to creation because you need to store them as a code, as a re recipe so that you can uh, reproduce the same uh, like type of like approach uh, to convert from raw to transient. If you lose the transient data or curation data, you can recreate them using the recipe. So you need to store them as a recipe repo. And then you have the servant enrich. So as your data is clean, it is processed, everything is done. You need to have proper data consumption so that other system can access to this data and use it. Same like data share, you need you can share the data as it as a data uh, like a base or data set with other things, other applications or systems. And then the last approach is you need to consider you need to have proper data and ML ops to have the lineage you need to have proper bi and analytics to use uh, the data and see different kind of trend a lot of times you should not let uh, people access to the full data you expose the data copy the data in a small data sandbox for data uh, exploration or data discovery you can uh, consider that one you, if you have a lot of data sources, you can uh, have a data marketplace where uh, someone new or analyst will have a full look that how the data looks like, what kind of metadata. It's kind of like a mostly showing the metadata, like uh, this is the business domain of transportation. Uh, the data is uh, ABC, this, this schema, this table to give a, like a glimpse uh, of the full data. And then there are all those ML use cases who is using all the clean data, raw data, it depends. So this is the data servant enrich. And then you have at the bottom, which is covering everything, where you need to have data monitoring, data alerting, data administration approach. If the data is not clean, you need to have alert. If the data is not coming properly, you need to have alert. If the trigger is not working, you need to have that kind of approach. You need to have data access management. Who has access to the data? You need to have data governance and everything needs to be in the cloud or it could be hybrid or it could be anything else. So these are the components that you need to consider designing, designing data and AI platform. Now with Azure, what you can get. So uh, this is a reference architecture from the uh, uh, like Microsoft Azure site, where all those things that I mentioned here from the data ingestion to store to process to data serve and also all those like data discover and govern, it's giving you everything. So if you have streaming of different IoT sources and big data streaming, you use Azure Event Hub or IoT Hub to bring the data, or, uh, ingest the data. Then you use uh, Azure Stream Analytics to uh, take the data from IoT Hub or Event Hub, process it and show it to Power BI in real time streaming as a dashboard or you show it in uh, cognitive uh, like do some kind of like a cognitive service approach or machine learning approach to process the data. If you have data like videos or images or files that are unstructured, you can use uh, ADF Azure Data Factory Pipeline, which is a part of Azure Synapse Analytics now, uh, to ingest the data through scheduled or event or triggered based data ingestion. If it is uh, semi-structured like CSV, logs or JSON, you can also do the same thing, use ADF. Or if it is structured data, or different Azure data services like Cosmos DB or SQL uh, structure table, you can also use uh, Azure Synapse Analytics ADF pipeline to bring the data. For the data storing of different uh, zones, as we said, you can have different container within Azure Data Lake Gen 2, and you can store the data here uh, in different zones. And as we said, we need to process the data to convert from one uh, zone to another zone, from raw to transient, then curation. You need we, you need to do all the data uh, transformation. You can do them using a Spark pool uh, on within uh, Azure Synapse Analytics, 
or even uh, serverless SQL pool. So and it's also like uh, pay as you go. So it's very it's not expensive at all. And uh, once you clean that data, uh, put it in the curation zone, uh, everything is done. You also can expose the data in Azure Synapse Analytics uh, like uh, data warehouse, which will be exposing your data as a uh, analytical side through Power BI for different kind of analytics. As we talked, if you want to expose the data for applications, you can expose it to Cosmos DB for different web and mobile application. If you want to share the data with other sources, you can also share it through your like within your Azure system in the serve section for the shared database. The discovery of the data and governance is can be done using Azure Purview. Azure Purview was in a preview. Now it's a full uh, version now and it is a fully managed platform where you're getting as your AD, cost management, key vault, that kind of security and everything. So all those things that we just talked and enterprise data and AI platform needs to have, you're getting them from the uh, like Azure platform, from the ingestion to processing, to store, to enrich, to serve and exposing and along with the discovery and govern, you're getting everything. So this is uh, one of the best practice that you can follow. And again, I'm not saying you need to do it from the first day. You can have iterative approach to ingest the data first and uh, store it, do some data analytics, expose it to Power BI, have more analytics, have different zones, do them, uh, add some ana uh, analytics and ML, and then expose it to Cosmos. So that kind, step-by-step uh, -step approach. But you are getting all the tools within this Azure domain. Now, uh, the second part of the uh, presentation is AI. So as we talk about all the data related components, now for AI, what are the components you need? So as we know that uh, AI doesn't work alone, AI needs data. So with the, the, uh, the platform that we are designing, it needs to have all the data uh, with it so that it can apply different kind of like ap uh, applications or approaches. And when we talk about AI, all those things are coming together. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, data science, or data analytics. So it's kind of like the full domain uh, and machine learning, deep learning, uh, data science are subdomain within AI. So what are the things we do actually with uh, artificial intelligence? So as we said, all those subdomain, it is the same thing with all the analytical capability of machine learning, NLP, speech, expert uh, recommendation system, robotics, vision. Those are all the uh, algorithms and everything that we are using these days through supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and app like uh, uh, even reinforcement learning is uh, uh, there as well. So when we talk about that, uh, there are some of the new terms this uh, we hear these days, which is uh, I've already said a bit, which is data ops and ML ops. Let's uh, take a look at this one first before we jumping into AI lifecycle and everything. So we all are familiar about DevOps, that which is uh, which works within the application development uh, lifecycle domain. So DevOps ensures CI/CD implementation, ensures greater collaboration between different uh, teams, speed and stability of development and deployment, building and hosting platform for different environments like Dev, QA, Prod, and also works in application platform and infrastructure level. But when we just think about the same role of DevOps for data and machine learning, it is data ops and ML ops. So it is the DevOps for data and AI. Data ops ensures automated uh, process oriented methodology used by analytics and data teams to improve data quality and reduce uh, cycle time. So reducing time, having proper lineage, having the data flow, this is the main job of the data ops so that the everything is automated. You don't need to do things manually. And the main job of MLOps is, is to ensure deployment, monitoring, reproducibility, scalability of machine learning models, which maintaining CTCI CD pipeline, which is continuous training, continuous uh, integration, and continuous development. So this is MLOps. MLOps is not something completely new. Adding those kind of automation using those tools and pipelines is MLOps. So it is a big uh, like buzzword these days as well. So just be careful how you are using it. Uh, someone raised a hand. So what is the question, please? So in MLOps, uh, the data ops which we are calling that is pointing to DevOps. That means uh, uh, DevOps is a 
subset of uh, ml ops can you take it in that way uh, when we when we uh, it's a devops uh, like data ops and ml ops is the same thing but when we call it uh, when the scope is application or the software uh, or application development life cycle it is we call it devops but whenever it's regarding data and ai the same things that the devops does it is done by the data ops regarding data and ml ops regarding the ai that is clear yeah but uh, uh, mm -hmm. because in this ml ops uh, both the data engineer and data science uh, will involve in this ml ops so setting up this ml ops pipeline so both the people uh, will have to provide their contribute contribution or it's like a, some other different team needs to take no. care of it no actually just like uh, for the devops application devops software developers are in working with the devops sometimes software developers are playing the devops role as well to have ci cd and everything same with uh, like uh, data engineer and ml engineer data engineers are the one who are ensuring all those data pipelines are working everything is properly uh, like uh, flowing there is no bottleneck and that is data ops and ml engineers who are ensuring that the model that data scientists and ai developers are built it is properly deployed it is there is proper monitoring approach there is proper reproducibility we can run the same training again we can scale the model into three four five parts so which is done by the machine learning engineer and we call it ml ops okay got it. thank yeah, you perfect. perfect thank you for asking and then the next thing we will like look at is ai and ml life cycle and the key personas is just like the data side so we need to set like this like the goal is set by the business leaders as we said business driven roi so business leaders will set up okay we want to do achieve this with the ai now the team will follow then once the goal is set a data engineer is the one who will bring the data prepare the data for the team Data scientists will start to work the moment the data is available. They will design the model, develop the model uh, for uh, and test different kind of hypotheses. ML engineers are the one who starts to work from there as well. They look at the data, how the data is coming, how the uh, inferencing will work, how the retraining will work. They are the one who will collaborate with the data scientist to take the model, put it into a production, which is uh, model deployment, and also expose the model as an API. So it's also their job. App developer who are communicating with the uh, uh, like ML engineers, they will get the REST API, all the authentication and information, and add it with their application, web and mobile or software, uh, so that the actual uh, like machine learning model is used and uh, it is making all the prediction. And at the end, whatever prediction it's making the data scientist will take a look and see that the model is always working well the model monitoring is working properly model uh, is there is no data drift there is no concept drift or that kind of things and the it operation is the one who supports throughout this approach from bringing the data developing the model giving the platform to develop the model deploying uh, creating these uh, like uh, supporting with the deployment platform and also implementing uh, the uh, machine learning uh, like the application and everything and uh, giving all this giving support for the model production model monitoring and that side so it's a it's a T, uh, it's a uh, it's a task of a full group where from the business leader to data engineer data scientist machine learning engineer app development it operation is collaborating with each other to achieve the goal so that's how the ai ml life cycle and key personas looks like now if uh, just i give uh, like a one or two minutes uh, like uh, overview i will i won't get uh, two details here uh, how the uh, like how data scientists are working or how do they design the model so the moment we ha we have some kind of like initial database available, they are the one who are working with the data to prepare the data. The they do apply uh, data cleaning, curation. They remove redundancy, uh, take care of all the missing values, uh, like corrupted rows and everything. They have the processed or the clean data, so which looks like this. And the moment uh, they are ready, okay, we will use this data for machine learning model development. They divide, divide the data into two parts. One is data training, one is for testing. The, the model that they uh, like train, they need to test it's doing good or bad. So they will use this 20% for the testing approach. 
Then the moment they have the training data, they do AI uh, development or model training. So it depends uh, what kind of like a, like a model it is. Sometimes you can have uh, category one, category two, category three data. So if you are doing single uh, value predict, if you're doing a classification model, you select some. If you are doing uh, like prediction model, you select some. If you select, if you do uh, clustering or uh, something else, you choose the right uh, uh, approach. You choose the right uh, uh, like uh, model, and also you choose the right uh, uh, algorithm. And then we, after choosing the algorithm, you also do the proper hyperparameter optimization, that you have the right parameter set that to give you the best model. And you also do different kind of like cross cross validation so that the model is not biased. It's properly designed and everything. Then you get the final model trained model. OK, after getting the model training like a trained model, you need to test it. You test it with the 20 percent of the data and then you try to predict. OK, it's doing good or bad. Uh, you need to do the evaluation of the performance. If it is a classification model, there are different kind of like metrics like MCC, st uh, specificity, sensitivity, accuracy, that kind. If it is regression, you see select this kind of like uh, metrics, RMSC, R2, uh, R square, MSC, that kind. It will give you whether it's a good model or bad model. So that's how the life cycle looks like from getting the data to cleaning it, selecting the proper approach, right algorithm, and getting the training done, and then testing the model. You get the right model. So then if we look at a higher level, not just the model training, this is how the approach looks like. From the, uh, you have the data storage, you ingest the data. You do all the data wrangling, data pro processing, data transformation, validation, and data featureization. One of the thing is, a cert like 70% of the success of your model is depending how you do the data featureization, whether it's done well or not. Then it's the same thing, uh, selecting the algorithm, uh, doing the model training, doing hyperparameter optimization, model testing and validation. Once you are uh, absolutely sure that this model is doing well, this is the model that you will put in production, you put the model in production. So how do you put the model in production? You take the model, which is just a binary file, you before and you need to have uh, like how you created that environment. You need to create a container uh, to have that model. You need to have the YAML file for the container creation. Also, you need to have a scoring file or a Python file, which will take the data as a single row, process the data, which and make the data uh, more consumable for the model. And then after doing the data process, uh, processing, which is mentioned on that Python script, the mod, the, uh, the scoring file give the data to that uh, model, and then uh, the model uh, use it, create a get a prediction values, and then give uh, as a response uh, to that uh, RESTful API or uh, from that uh, uh, container. So that's how you deploy the model. Sometimes you do batch prediction, sometimes you and also you need to have proper model monitoring so that you can identify it's a good model or not. After six months, uh, sometimes the model gets obsolete or it starts to give bad result. With those model monitoring, you can identify, OK, uh, your model is giving good result. Uh, you can monitor the prediction it's making. It's not garbage. It's always good. So you need to have that kind of option. Now, from a platform point of view, for to design the architecture, what are the things you need for AI platform components? You need to have, as we mentioned at the beginning, you are not going to have data for everything. You need to have some common use cases with uh, pre-trained uh, models. So your platform needs to provide you pre-trained common AI use cases, uh, like cognitive service. Your platform uh, you design for your enterprise should have uh, machine learning custom AI modeling option through Jupyter Notebook because data scientists use it a lot. If you don't have that many data, data scientists, you uh, like your developer may try to use uh, automated machine learning where they will just upload the data. All those machine learning modeling, everything will be done by the AutoML. So your platform needs to have that kind of option these days. You need to also have some kind of like ML designer where you want to do all those machine learning approach one by one by yourself, but not by writing the code. Uh, you want all those most of the things done by the system, by the uh, platform. 
you just do the drag and drop of uh, loading the data, drag and drop of uh, training and all those individual approach. So we call it machine learning designer. Your platform should have that kind of option to give you that kind of benefit to your developer. If you write your code uh, in Python or Jupyter Notebook, your model should, uh, your platform should give you the option to use the compute um, as a AI a data science virtual machine where you will do the train like you will write the code in your laptop, but you will run the training in in a data science virtual machine which has GPUs or CPUs because you don't want to buy a GPU for one hour of training. You will just like uh, use the uh, AI uh, computational component uh, in the cloud and also once you done the training, your platform should have option for training of uh, using big cluster. If you are doing a big uh, training of images and uh, or NLP, you need to you may need to use multiple GPUs in that case. If you are doing inferencing of uh, compute, uh, which is a single uh, container or multi container, you need to have uh, different kind of like ACI AKS based option, which is a single container uh, instance or uh, like multiple container instance, which is orchestrated through Kubernetes cluster. And also sometime if you get uh, like you need data annotation tool, you have a lot of data, but uh, you need to annotate them one by one by one. If you have a platform that gives you annotation, which you uh, you annotate five, but rest of the five is automatically annotated following the way you annotated five, you uh, like that kind of tool is always useful along with MLOps, which is continuous training pipeline, model testing pipeline, model monitoring graphs and the dashboard, model drifting graphs and benefits uh, facilities, and uh, dashboard to see how uh, you are doing the uh, inferencing or uh, like testing and everything. So your platform should have all the pre-trained, custom machine learning, machine learning compute, data annotation, and MLOps features. So when we look at machine uh, Azure ML, you see almost a, like everything is there. So for the pre-build, you have cognitive services. You have bot framework for custom AI. You have Azure Machine Learning on that Azure Machine Learning. You have uh, like Jupyter Notebook. You have AutoML. You have uh, Azure ML Designer. For the AI tools, as we said, there is Azure ML Studio that you can use to get all the uh, use all the benefits to for coding and uh, model management. You have Azure ML Workbench and also uh, if you want to use your Visual Studio, you can use it for custom uh, modeling and uh, like push your custom script for model training and everything. And what kind of framework it supports for AutoML or uh, like uh, DSVM, Data Science Virtual Machine, it use uh, Cognitive Toolkit, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Cafe, almost everything, Scikit-Learn, Keras, everything. Uh, it also giving you the full AI infrastructure you need, like a data lake for to. Uh, for uh, structured and unstructured data, SQL Server, Cosmos DB, and the compute that we are always scared of because it is the most expensive part in data science and AI. Uh, you get it from the AI and you, it's mostly pay as you go, so you won't have to pay anything extra. It's offering you batch AI as a Kubernetes service, which is also like fully managed all the data science virtual machine. So you're getting this full end-to-end -end, uh, option from the uh, Azure ML. So if we just look at the production side, so how uh, is it going to look like if you if it starts from the right side, right corner, you have the Azure machine learning endpoint, uh, you have the code that uh, you will do the training. So the first thing is you use Azure machine learning uh, pipeline to push the code for the training the model. And then the moment you are trained, you evaluate your model. You are uh, satisfied that this is the right model. You push it for the uh, like uh, registering. And before uh, everything, you uh, like uh, you go through this kind of like approach of uh, publishing your uh, machine learning pipeline, which has uh, running runs for new code, which is data sanity test, unit test. The data is here. Uh, your script has access to the data. Everything is done. You create proper uh, DevOps uh, machine learning workspace. You create the compute. You create the write the script, and then uh, you push uh, the script on that compute to train your model. The moment uh, the moment you are sure that this is the model that you want, you register your model, push it. Your uh, use AML model management so that the model is uh, in the Azure Machine Learning workspace. It is registered, and then you can 
if you want to test it more as an AI web service, you can package the model, deploy the model as ACI as your container instance, and then which is this in the bottom, uh, and you can use it as a QA or staging environment connected with your uh, web and mobile app to test it. And uh, if you want to put it into a production, you can push it uh, the same approach as a multiple container in an AKS as a Kubernetes service and uh, use it, expose it as a, a web, web API or a web service and uh, connect it with your web or mobile app and use it. So all those like from model training to use the compute to train it, test it, register your model, using it as a test container and SEI, putting the model in AKS as a full production environment, you're getting all those things and you are doing this orchestration using pipeline. So you're getting all those benefits. And then we have uh, the, if you look at like a very high level, uh, like uh, uh, reference architecture. So for the storing, you use this kind of like data lake, data warehouse based approach. For uh, you use ADF for different data transformation. Uh, for the compute, you use Databricks or that kind of notebook uh, for the uh, trade like processing of your data. The moment you are sure that okay, the data is clean, you put it into a SQL data warehouse after doing some uh, star schema or modeling. And then you can expose the data for different kind of like Power BI, Power Automate related reporting, dashboard or analytics. And then you, you can also like take the data as from the same approach to use cognitive service or machine learning to train the model and everything. So the moment you train the model, you registered your model in an ACR, and then you can have a dev environment uh, for your uh, using ACI as a content instance, which is also an API, and you push it through uh, as your pipeline. If you are confident, you push QN in a uh, broad environment using AKS, Kubernetes into and have multiple pods of the same uh, like a model, and then you can use this model in your web and mobile uh, app to using that RESTful API. All those model performance or like results, you can store it in Azure Cosmos DB so that you can bring the data back to Data Lake and doing the retraining, model uh, monitoring, and everything. So that's how a, like a very reference architecture looks like within this Azure ecosystem for your data and AI components for end to end. You won't even have to go outside of this platform. And a uh, few of the things I would uh, suggest you to consider before, uh, like when you design the platform, one is uh, choose a platform, whether it's Azure or AWS, uh, like you need to, like that platform needs to have uh, data ingestion, data storing, uh, data processing, data discovery, data visualization, data monitoring, AI training, pre-trained model, and AI model hosting, all those platform. If your platform doesn't offer them, then you need to move the data from one place to another place, which is always the hard part. When you move the data, you pay more, it's more work and it's more expensive. So one of the recommendation is uh, for best practice, try not to uh, try to move the data as less as possible because it's gonna impact your uh, work, your data ops, your ML ops and your costing as well. Try to bring the computation as close as the data so that you can do the data processing, data analytics, and machine learning approach. So this is always useful. Uh, try to use as much low code and co uh, custom tools as possible because if you use a lot of like uh, custom uh, like uh, tools, you need it will you will have to like maintain the code, do the versioning always I use the use the scheduling so ADF and all the other tools are local tools uh, I will always suggest you to like use it uh, try to use cloud managed services so that is always useful uh, and also there is a like a classic conflict sometime I always talk about that which is product log versus cloud vendor log because all those components that I sh showed data and AI related are Azure specific component. Now you can say bring some new product, uh, a SaaS product uh, that is offering you something out of all those like uh, like uh, things that you're looking for. So are you gonna go with just the cloud that offers you everything, or uh, or you you are going a cheaper SaaS that you offer you something but not everything? So. It's kind of like the conversation of product log versus cloud vendor log. You need to do your uh, choose your battle wisely in that case. And uh, the last but uh, the most important part is when you're designing that data and AI platform, 
you need to have this long term vision. What will be the end goal and the target architecture? But you need to achieve them with iterative short term milestone. It doesn't happen in a day. So thank you. Uh, it's almost uh, one hour. Thank you for attending my talk. Uh, if you have any question, reach me on Twitter or uh, send me uh, like you can add me on LinkedIn or send me any kind of like uh, queries or feedback in LinkedIn if you have any question. And uh, yeah, that's it. My uh, my like today's presentation and uh, just want to like share uh, one more thing before I in my topic. If you're looking for a job in US and Canada, uh, in my team, I'm always looking for data engineer and cloud DevOps, uh, and we are based in US and Canada. So uh, feel free to look at jobs.isaac.com uh, and uh, or search your company uh, at uh, and LinkedIn. So there are like not only IT, there are like finance, CX, R&D. Uh, a lot of roles are currently available. So thank you.